Here's what you don't have to do to wake up from the dream of separation. You don't have to find the perfect pointing. You don't have to find the perfect teacher. You don't even have to develop a relationship with a specific teacher. It may help, but it's not necessary. You don't have to find the right text. You don't have to find some obscure passage in an ancient text. You don't have to figure out the perfect technique for yourself, the perfect mantra, or the perfect way to do breathing meditation or breath-based meditation. You don't have to become extraordinarily mindful. You don't have to learn to develop a deep meditative state. You don't have to know what meditative samadhi is. You don't have to know a lot of terms about spirituality, awakening, Buddhism. You don't have to find the right spiritual community. You don't require associating with a specific group of people to wake up. So why is this? Well, one way of looking at it is all of those things that I just listed, all of those people, resources, tools, information are not right here, right now. And all you need to wake up is what's here right now. You only wake up in the moment. You only wake up right now. It doesn't take a minute. It doesn't take a second. It's not in time. When we think about all of the resources, we think we need to wake up. We're actually just being distracted in this moment by thoughts. We're being distracted from the truth, from the undeniable, radically present truth of reality, which is right here. It's not in a thought. It's not in the future. It's not revealed when you get conditions just right in your life. It's not even revealed because it's never unrevealed. It's never hidden. The deepest truth of what you are is never hidden. You can't miss it. You've never missed it. You've never lost it. You can't find something you've never lost. You can't enter a room you've never left. You can't become something you already are. You can't learn or know about something that you always have known. The mind's version of knowing or the thought's version of knowing is tied to doubt. Mental certainty is tied to doubt. The moment you feel certain about something intellectually or cognitively, you're setting yourself up to doubt it or to doubt something else in the near future. So what I'm pointing to here is completely beyond that kind of doubt and that kind of certainty. And beyond doesn't mean it's somewhere else. It's beyond it in truth. It's beyond it in obviousness. It's beyond it in proximity, in intimacy, right here. So you don't need anything to return to true nature. You don't go anywhere to return to true nature. You don't acquire anything to return to true nature. There's no technique that brings you back to your true nature. All techniques do is help you recognize the distraction of thought, the mechanism of mind, what seemingly obscures what cannot be obscured. So techniques in a sense are subtractive. They're subtracting the sense of a need for a future, a need for perfect conditions, a need to find something, if properly applied. This is why inquiry is so powerful. Inquiry isn't a technique to cause something to happen. Inquiry, inquiry is a questioning. It's a surrender to the answer, the unspeakable answer. Why is it unspeakable? Because it's too close. It's not a thought. It's not a concept. It's right here. You've never left it. 
you've never left it. Truth is right here. It's never left you. Living truth, unfiltered reality. If you're thinking about good or bad, true or untrue, agree or disagree, recognize those are thoughts. Then turn your attention to what it is that's apparently aware of those thoughts and stop. Just stop right there. Don't move. Don't try to cause anything to happen. Don't try to surrender. Don't try to figure it out. Just stop right here. This is where awakening happens. This is where awakening always happens. This is where awakening is always happening. This is where there's only awakeness.